Caution! This video contains hexapods, like the dancing ones shown here from the University of Applied Sciences in Upper Austria, and may lead to endless hours of staring at pretty hexapods online. Hexapod, or six-footed, in this case refers to a six-legged walking robot. Other use cases include in nature studies, where hexapoda is a group of arthropods including the insects. In fact, robot hexapods are inspired by these critters. In Arduino code for my robot hexapod, you can find references to the coxa femur and tibia segments of an insect leg. Hexapod can also refer to a type of robotics platform called the Stuart platform, which uses six servos. A video of a DIY one can be seen here. Spring term of 2011 begins. For 2007, inspired by the magical tubes of the internet, I decided to build a hexapod. I email out to my friends. Hello, has anyone built a hexapod? I want to build a simple one for 2007, but I'm unsure where to start. It's February 1st, and I get plenty of replies, some of them talking about inverted bicores and other things I don't understand. I learn about clan and gensen linkages, which I won't go into here. In particular, I end up staring at this picture of a parallax bobot. It's not at all clear to me how the leg mechanism works, so I decided to build a foam core version. Foam core is the fast way to prototype ideas you have in mind, as it can be machined in a sense with just a razor and I highly recommend prototyping any ideas you have with it. I also built a 2D version in SOLIDWORKS to play with, or try to, but since I'm completely new to SOLIDWORKS at this point, I end up not trying to figure out the optimal leg length and I just go ahead and build it. Two years later, I'm much better at SOLIDWORKS, and here's a quick video of me making a model of the mechanism. You can try implementing this, and there's no need to copy what I did here, since SOLIDWORKS is definitely in many ways to the same result language, but it's a bit tricky if you're new to SOLIDWORKS. Note the use of the add relations tool, making things fixed, constraining them with dimensions, and the use of equations and global variables. Also, for the love of hexapods, don't be fooled by this throwaway sketch, and make sure all your lines are black rather than blue, meaning they are fully defined in your real SOLIDWORKS parts. I spent an entire weekend building a small prototype hexapod that uses just two servos. Here are some pictures of the build process, including turning aluminum and plastic spacers on a lathe and milling out slots. The aluminum was cut out on the sheet metal shear and bent on the brake. I did this at a student-run shop called Miters, but actually, the Pavlovo shop guys are really awesome and friendly, so you should get to know them. And then, my very janky robot walks with the help of a giant weight on the front in the form of a screw to counteract the Arduino carrier board weight in the back. It's wobbly as heck, but so immensely satisfying to get something done. Speaking as a jaded senior, never underestimate the importance of morale in going through your studies at MIT. About 1.5 months have passed, and it's now March 15th. Following a small 2 degree of freedom hexapod, I spent a while doing more research on designing hexapods, basically staring at lots of pretty pictures of hexapods online, and then decided to just go for the 18 servo version, because why not? Right around spring break, I built a prototype of a single leg based off of this CAD model I found online. This leg is made out of ABS plastic, and wow, machining plastic is like butter compared to machining aluminum. At this stage, I learned things like the fact that emails are round, so if you draw a rectangle exactly right for a servo to plop through and mill that shape with a giant bit, the servo will get stuck at the rounded corners. There are many possible solutions, such as milling out the corners an extra bit in a washbone shape, or using a water jet instead which shoots a thin stream of water and garnet at a part to cut through it, or, if you're me, taking a drill press to the corners. After building one leg and figuring out some servo angle commands for moving the leg up and down and forward and backward, I start mass producing legs. I arbitrarily set some leg lengths and draw a one-to-one -one template in my notebook. Then I use the sharpie to trace these shapes. The sharpie bleeds through the paper onto the plastic stock. Having been assured by one of the UAs that the servos are powerful enough for anything I want to do in this class, instead of sitting there fretting about whether my servos are powerful enough, I then arbitrarily attach all the legs to a giant piece of ABS plastic. This is the result. The black thing you see is a battery pack I soldered together, because 18 servos will eat through the tiny kit batteries in no time. Oh dear, it's now April 29th and my robot does not walk at all. At this point I'm pretty stressed out, and at a loss as to what to do. Maybe I need to use more servos concurrently to push my robot up, which I haven't done yet due to the limitations to Arduino PWM or Pulse Width Modulation code libraries. Maybe the servos aren't strong enough? Maybe I need more current than the 3 amps Arduino Nano Carrier Board can provide. I decide, what the heck. I'll bend on my robot in half and see what happens. End result, it does a bit better. But it still face plants out there two steps. Then I hit upon using less delay between leg states, and it seems to work.
The day before the competition, which I'm not participating in, seeing as I'm using way more than a lot of the number of servos in the kit, I decided to reduce the platform size even more into a circle, and also cut down on the leg lengths to make the robot lighter. Aha! I just read this tutorial by a guy called Charles Guan on using calipers that includes a section on how to divide a circle evenly. I do some math and make a paper template, tape it to my robot, and machine away. Side note, this is super simple to do in SOLIDWORKS, actually, and you can print out a one-to-one -one template and do the same thing. It's a good demo of the circular pattern tool. Upon testing, this one works much better. The gate it's exhibiting to walk forward and backward is the classic tripod gate. Essentially, for each leg there is an up and down state, as well as a forward and backward state. At any given time, three legs are up and three legs are down, and the three legs in the air move forward, while the three legs on the ground move backward. If you're curious, the Arduino code I put together can be found here on GitHub. A site for sharing code and sometimes even design files, it is popular in the open source community, including the open source hardware community. Over the summer, I CAD the robot to learn SOLIDWORKS. Since then, the robot has been with me to maker fairs, which are when lots of people who like to make things get together and show off their projects, and even career fairs. I'm pretty sure a demo of it was the deciding factor in me getting my junior year internship. I highly recommend documenting your work thoroughly, since employers are more likely to be looking at pictures or video of your robot than the actual robot. But if you're picking projects to work on anyway, never underestimate the power of a real-life demo. I'm not terribly proud of my robot, but I will admit that I learned a lot from building it. So you see, even a shoddily put-together robot can be useful and highly educational. Where to go from here? Really, you want your servos to be supported on both sides, and the really interesting part is the controls, such as implementing inverse kinematics so that I don't have to program all the leg positions by hand. Only then can I get my robot to dance. It's been two years and I haven't implemented these things, but I did find a tutorial for a writable hexpod on this awesome site, instructables.com, and built this by myself over the summer after my sophomore year. So, if you ever want to ride on a 2 degree of freedom hexpod, drop me an email before I disassemble it. I, for one, am looking forward to the 18 degree of freedom writable hexapods being built by Artisans Asylum, a makerspace, aka large space where people gather and make things. Best of luck in 2007. May the robot gods take a liking to your sacrifices.